In the headlines, Prime Minister Skerritt pledges continued support for Venezuela on the anniversary of the Petro Caribe Agreement. Presidents of the Grotto Board forced to resign amid protracted delay in the construction of the Bellevue Royal Facility. And the Customs and Law Enforcement Officers now better equipped to help reduce emission of ozone depleting gases. I am Andrea Louis with the Channel 5 News, back with the details after this. Thank you for staying with us. First up, Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt has pledged his continued support and solidarity to the government and the people of Venezuela. His comments come in light of the recent political instability in the country as a result of rising tensions due to the opposing views of the main political parties. Mr. Skerritt also condemned a recent helicopter attack on the Venezuelan Supreme Court and Interior Ministry. When a police officer commandeers illegally a property of the state, in that case a helicopter which is armed with grenades and, 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 and uh, firepower, military firepower, and sends out grenades at the Ministry of in the Interior, and also the courthouse. What else can we define to be an act of terrorism? And then for us to, to sit as, as, as a country, as a, as, as a world, as global institutions, and not condemn violent actions is unbecoming of the world. Irrespective of who is perpetrating this violence is going to be condemned by us, all of us. The Prime Minister says Venezuela has been a true friend to Dominica and committed his solidarity to the country, which is going through troubled times. Venezuela is going through its own challenges. And it is a time when we must stand in even stronger solidarity with Venezuela. So, Ambassador, we stand with you and I'm saying to people in Dominica, um, not because of Petro Caribbean or what Venezuela has provided Dominica tangibly. We do so because we understand what friendship is, we understand what solidarity is, and we do so as a matter of principle. Prime Minister Skerritt was speaking during an anniversary event on Thursday to mark the 12th anniversary of the Petro Caribbean Agreement. In other top stories, Friday 30th June is Regional Testing Day and the Dominican public is being urged to show up in their numbers for the event. Throughout the month of June, the National HIV AIDS Response Program, NOP, has been sensitizing the public in the lead up to Regional Testing Day, which is being recognized under the theme, Test Like a Champion. This is the 10th year of Regional Testing Day, and NARP coordinator Alison Samuel says special emphasis is being placed on first-time testers. I mean, in the beginning, it was new. People still continue to be scared about getting to know their status, but we've seen that gradually decrease. So people have gotten a lot more comfortable with getting tested. We'd like to see first-time testers more, you know, more of these people because it's one thing to have gotten tested before and you are comfortable enough, you are coming back. But when you are doing it for the first time, I always say to the person who comes for the first time, congratulations. You have made a very wise decision because you may be HIV positive and not know. Not knowing does not help you. Because not knowing means that you are kept in the dark. You do not understand the kind of ravaging that this virus can do to your body. And so, you know, your immune system gets weaker and weaker with time. But once you know your status, you've been empowered, you can make informed decisions about your health. In 2016, Dominica had a record number of over 800 people being tested. Samuel hopes to reach 1,000 this year. And last year, we, the week we tested the most people. In the ninth year, we had like 800 people coming forward to get tested. Out of that, you had about 428 women. And, um, you know, that it was really big for us because we really saw that people 
were getting really comfortable about getting tested. And interestingly enough, our theme last year was stop ducking it because we targeted people who had never tested before. Um, interestingly enough, we saw just about 29% of that 800 being first-time testers. But we were still satisfied because we know that the awareness has spread to, you know, a few more people. Testing centers around the island open from 9 a.m. On to environmental matters, customs officials and law enforcement officers are now better equipped to play their part in reducing Dominica's emission of ozone-depleting gases into the atmosphere. A one-day national training workshop held here was meant to improve skills in the implementation and enforcement of the Montreal Protocol regulations and to prevent illegal trade in harmful ozone-depleting substances. The Montreal Protocol is an international treaty designed to protect the ozone layer by phasing out the production of numerous substances that are responsible for ozone depletion. According to the program, countries like Dominica do not produce any ozone depleting substances, but we have to use them because that is what the technology has given us. And so the, the whole idea was to phase out ODSs that were, that were chlorofluorocarbons. It was discovered some time ago that the same hydrofluorocarbons that we use to replace the chlorofluorocarbons were themselves not ozone depleting substances, but they were contributing to global warming because they make a, a, another layer of, of protection that prevents hot air from escaping into the, into the higher zones of the, the space we are living. The workshop was facilitated by Donalyn Charles, the Program Officer of UN Environment. And it's going to be able to give you the basic tools, information, skill sets and experience needed to assist the ECU with implementing its import-export licensing system so that when ozone depleting substances or refrigerants come into Dominica or equipment that use those substances like refrigerators, AC units, cars, water coolers, anything that can cool or heat because an AC or refrigeration system can do both, it depends on which one you want to use. Once they come into Dominica, you're able to identify them because all of these are controlled under the Montreal Protocol. And as a party to the Montreal Protocol, Dominica is mandated to control those and it's mandated to phase out the use of those substances. A similar workshop for customs brokers was held on Thursday. In other news, acting president of the Grotto Home for the Homeless Board, Paul Green, says there is nothing suspicious about the delay in the relocation of residents to its new site at Bellevue Rawl. Idona John Baptist visited the construction site where work is ongoing on the new building and filed this story. Financial constraints, including an additional cost of about $70,000, have led to the delay in the construction project. Initial work done by prisoners had to be redone, and another firm was hired to take over the job. The construction delays have caused the board's president, Innsworth Irish, to vacate the post. As a result, Paul Green, who served as the board's vice president, had to step in as acting president. Green told Channel 5 News on the project site on Wednesday that Irish informed him that he would be taking a sabbatical for two to six months but it's been over a year now. You see, the thing about it is that Mr. Irish believed that we could have moved up to this location and any works to be done, to be completed, could have been completed while the residents were here. But um, most of us disagreed with him, you know, because we figured that, um, and they're elderly people, eh? they're people who are incapacitated. And you can't have people, you know, exposed to all the noise and the, um, the, 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 the sand and the cement and also the paint, the smell of the paint, you know. So um, that was the humanitarian at all, as far as some of us were concerned. He was doing a lot, eh, but he got kind of frustrated and he just decided to back off for a while. And we actually called him, you know, to find out what the situation is. And he said he's not going to come back until the residents have been moved or are ready to be moved. The estimated budget for the project was $2.5 million. 
However, the funds have been hard to come by to complete the works. Compounding the situation was when some aspects of the construction had to be redone because the board deemed the work done by prisoners to be unsatisfactory. Um, if you notice, we have put in, we have actually demolished two, two um, of the shelters because it was done in a sort of slipshod manner and actually it was done using some um, used material, I would say. And it wasn't very well done in the first place, you know, and consequently we, we had to do this, which is significantly better. And um, as a matter of fact, you know, I think that is impervious to any kind of hurricane. We've basically finished that aspect of it. So we have some more work to do on putting in a road entrance over there. And we also have to put in a wall on the other side so that we can backfill, so that we can have a proper road coming from the front to the back so that we can deliver goods and possibly we have, because this is going to be, this is a dormitory for men. And if we have somebody to carry out, you know, by ambulance or by the, a, a vehicle, by, you know, means of a vehicle, which we just acquired incidentally, um, that can be facilitated. Rainbow Construction is now putting the finishing touches on the ground floor of the two-story building. Last year, the, the Prime Minister, about June, the Prime Minister promised us the money, you know, $200,000 so that um, that money could be used to come up here to, to do all the works necessary to bring the residents, transfer them from Roseau up to Bellevue Roll. And that took a little time in coming. But now that we've got the money, you know, as you can see, work is progressing very satisfactorily. As you can see, you know, everything is ready here. The kitchen is almost ready. You know, we're getting a water tank from the Wasco. Um, we have, we have... We have built, yeah, we have one from Red Cross. We have built a brand new septic tank over there, compliments. Where the funding came from the, from the president. The new grotto home offers more rooms and features a doctor's office. There are plans for a backyard garden, including a poultry farm on the two-acre property. The board is hoping that the new grotto home can open to residents by the end of July, weather permitting. Idona John Baptist reporting for Channel 5 News. Coming up, a visually impaired college graduate, Loic Charles, sets himself another challenge. Welcome back. Entrepreneurs in Bellevue Chopin can now access CBI funds for small business enterprise development. A check for $150,000 has been presented to the Village Council for this purpose. Parliamentary Representative Honorable Kenneth Daru says this amount represents a fraction of $600,000 worth of projects submitted for funding. Now what we, what we tried to do is that um, some of you would have asked for, so for some bigger amounts. Um, we tried to see if we could we reduce some of these amounts and hoping that at least that can get you started. And, and yours truly, as I said, will continue to make, um, to lobby, of course, for, for more funding to, to make up the, the remainder. Um, also, we try to, we try to approve a wider variety of projects. And as Mr. Shilling for said, sorry, we, we got, for example, somewhere like maybe 12 or 15 applications for bus snackets. And while we anticipate an influx of people into Bellevue Chopin, we, we think that you know, it's going to be counterproductive in, in having 12 snackets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You with me? Okay, so what we did, we, we tried to see how we could, we, 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 we could help the existing ones and, um, and, and assist one or two people who want to start off. Daru says those who did not make this list can expect to receive funding after the 2017-2018 national budget is presented. Daru warns that CBI funds is not free money and it should be invested responsibly. Mr. Daru says some of the unique project ideas will complement the new Petit Savan settlement, which is expected to bring in over 1,000 new residents to the area. The first visually impaired graduate of the Dominica State College is planning on moving to higher heights as he sets his eyes on studying at a U.S. university. Loic Charles made history last October when he graduated as the first visually impaired student of the Dominica State College. 
Today, with an associate's degree in information technology, he has been seeking a job since he graduated. While Lewick says he is disappointed, his situation is not unusual to any other regular person who has graduated and is still jobless. For anyone who knows the young man, his circumstances have never discouraged him. He is pushing on to set another record. I have been looking and I haven't found a job quite yet. I'm also looking to attend a, a university in Texas, which is the University of the Incarnate Word, um, a, a rather small um, Catholic institution. I enrolled and so on. I, I, I nearly have all the paperwork and so on to be able to leave, hopefully, in August of this year. The time I would like to go there in this year, not as certain, but I will be attending sooner or later. Yeah. I have sponsors who help me, um, who have help, um, assisted me financially from basically primary school up till college in ways that they can, in ways that they can, and also the government will be on board assisting me with you know funding for university. As well as my parents, I should say. Loic will pursue a bachelor's degree in marketing from the Texas University. My career aspiration is musician. Basically anything in the line of music from engineering to producing, being an actual artist, singer slash songwriter, and also I rap. I actually do most of these things. I plan to apply my marketing skill and knowledge, which I will learn at the institution, into my music career in terms of the business aspect. At 21, Lowick's story is an inspiration to even the common man. He had this to say to parents of children who are blind or young people who are visually impaired. I would say, you know, don't try to hide them. Don't say because they, they like, don't be ashamed of your, your child or if you are, you are the child, don't be ashamed of yourself, don't doubt yourself, don't hinder yourself from being out there. Because from preschool up till now, I have always been in school, all my school in preschool, primary, high school, I have also always been in a fully a normal, so to speak, school. Like everyone, all these students are normal. Because first of all, we don't really have the you know special schools here. I have never once doubted myself because, in the first place, if I I myself had any doubt, I could have a million people behind me. I could have my parents behind me, no matter who it is. If I I don't have the drive, if I'm not the one putting my best foot forward and doing what I have to do from my end personally, I wouldn't have been thus far. And also with the help of God. On to graduation season now, Dominicans are being told to develop a lifelong passion for formal education, mainly tertiary education, as it can improve their personal development. Deanna Noel of the UE Open Campus was addressing the certificate ceremony for face-to-face -face courses held during the second semester of the 2016-2017 academic year. The courses ran for at least 12 weeks from February to May. Over 60 people graduated across four courses, namely Advanced Supervisory Management, Economics of Procurement, Introduction to Counseling, and Project Management. Noel believes that through continuing formal education, one can make a more meaningful impact in the community. Every time we have a ceremony and we bring all of you together, it's our proudest moment and we're celebrating with people, many of whom have not gone to a classroom for a little while. And I tell people, it's okay to know a lot of things, but you need to be informed about the thing that you know. Graduates spoke of their experiences. As the course went on, he forced us to utilize the mind and be creative in our level of thinking. To him, there was no wrong answer, and every answer is debatable. <laughs> he brought me to a point where I was thirsty for knowledge. I no longer saw him as a lecturer, but as a teacher. After almost 20 years, I never imagined that I would be back in the classroom with Mr. Holmes. But it was a pleasant surprise. 
and graduates of the Northeast Comprehensive School have been cautioned to guard against those who would offer them shortcuts to success in life at any cost. The students bade farewell to their alma mater at a ceremony on Wednesday attended by the Minister for Education and the Leader of the Opposition. Success is not only measured in what you gain, but also in what you lose. If you receive a top position, a, or a high-profile scholarship, a major opportunity at the expense of your dignity, your pride, your values, and your morals, yes, you may have gained a position, but you would have failed. One of the main ingredients of success is deferred gratification. Make the best choices. Do not settle for what's easy convenient or popular. Graduates were also warned against idleness and complacency. Okay. We are ensuring industry relevance and high employability for all of you, our graduating students. I do hope that you will continue to take advantage of opportunities in technical, vocational, education and training in ICTs and all the disciplines available as you move on to the Dominica State College or to the world of work. I give you every assurance that as government, we will continue to impress on you the need to partner with you, the young people of Dominica, through the provision of scholarships, grants, and soft loans to ensure that every Dominican youth, to ensure that every family, be they Kalinago, Rastafarian, rich or poor, that every one of you receive an education of the highest quality and one that is affordable. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the graduating class of Northeast Comprehensive School 2017. That's news. Your sports highlights next with Kenny Williams. First up in sports, West Indies women felt the wrath of a determined Indian side when India won that encounter by seven wickets in the ICC Women's World Cup on Thursday. Batting first, West Indies women reached 183 for eight by the 50th over. Haley Matthews scored 43, Afi Fletcher 36 not out, and Chanel Daly 33. Set 184 to win, India finished on 166 with three wickets fallen. Smirti Manhana struck 106 to help put India in the dominant position. Meantime, West Indies captain Stephanie Taylor says her team did not have their best day on the pitch. Um, I thought we got you know, a good um, platform, um, just didn't build on that in the end. Again, because it's the second time now. Yeah, it's the second time, so we, we definitely need to do some work where that is concerned. When you look back at the game, um, you would you would think that you know that's where you, you know that's where you went wrong, where you, you know you're not rotating in the strike, and you know it does show that we had, you know too many dot balls and you know batters not you know in the middle there rotating in the strike. The Windies' next match will be against South Africa on July two. In football, national coach Rajesh Lachu continued to show optimism despite the one-all draw against host Grenada on Wednesday. He said in spite of Dominica's result in their first match in the 2017 Windward Island Senior Men's Championship, it was better than a loss. It is not the result we were looking for. We were looking to get all three points. Um, luck was in the favor of the team, the Grenada team, because of their questionable goal in terms of if the player was offside. In our opinion, he was offside, but we are not the referees. 
so we continue to play. Um, I thought the Grenada team did well. I guess they, because of the fact that they would have three games against Trinidad and Bermuda twice coming into the tournament, they would have been more an experienced team in terms of international games. But I thought our team spirit was better and we were able to pull through. I was very proud of the defence. He says moving forward, it's back to the drawing board ahead of Friday's game. We want to play faster and have more completed passes in our build-up. Today we were a little more direct, but in, in being direct, at times the ball was not served in the right areas. When it was served in the right areas, we were able to get behind Grenada. Between now and Friday, there is not much we could do in terms of physical preparation because now it's about recovery to make sure that all of the players are close to 100% as much as possible going into Barbados because Barbados will be fit, will be fresh. Dominica's next assignment will be against Barbados at 5.30 p.m. at Fond Plain Field. Next up, President of Dominica Olympic Committee, Billy Doktrov, says plans are in the pipeline to target and support Dominica's elite athletes soon. What we're trying to focus on is, you know, our, our, our elite athletes, I believe that we, they need to be given much more support. And um, so we have ident we, we, we're in the process of identifying um, areas where we, can, where we can source funds for them. And fortunately for us, we just came from a meeting in Miami where, we, um, where, where, where the, the meeting was about, you know, identifying areas where we, can, where, where we can fund. And so it came at a very opportune time for us, seeing that we were, we were new in our office. So we met quite a few persons out there, and um, we have already identified areas where we believe that we can source funds to, to assist those, those athletes. Um, I said we are, I'm very, very optimistic and very hopeful, and um, I said we're changing things around because we believe that there's much more that we can do, and, and, and we're just asking for the patience of the athletes and the general public. But again, we, 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 I think we're on the right track, and the general public is right behind us, and I'm really grateful for that. Sports continues with this item where parliamentary representative for the Mao constituency, Honorable Raven Blackmore, says the massacre court should receive a facelift soon. His comments at a recent check handing over ceremony. We have actually paid the down payment for the covering for massacre um, basketball court. And it's going to be very, very beautiful. We hope by July to have the process um, started. We're going to treat the walls very, very nicely, and to create a nice arena for the young persons of Massa, more so in basketball, but the young ladies will be able to actually play volleyball also. On to primary school sports, Wesley Primary secured their spot in the finals of the school's Division I netball finals with a 14-12 win against St. John's on Wednesday. For Wesley, Kimberly Titt, 7 out of 11, and Kiara Marcel, 7 from 9 attempts. Shooting for St. John's were Mauricia Andrew, 7 out of 10, and Zara Joseph, 5 out of 8. The finals of the 2017 Primary Schools Netball Championship is carded for Friday at Margot. In Division II, Sinico Primary, the 2016 winner will meet Clifton Savon Pie combined. The Division I matchup will be between the Wesley and the W.S. Stevens Primary Schools. Matches start at 3 p.m. and 4, respectively. That's all the sporting highlights for now. I am Kenny Williams. Join us next time. Coming up, your weather forecast. Good evening and welcome to tonight's weather broadcast. I'm your presenter, Annie Corrette Joseph. We begin this evening by taking a look at earlier infrared satellite imagery, which showed this area of convection associated with a tropical wave currently affecting the area. Visible satellite imagery showed some multi-layered clouds over the island of Dominica during the course of the afternoon with some pockets of embedded CB just off the east coast. Radar imagery indicated shower activity over the northern Lesser Antilles, including Dominica, this afternoon. 
Conditions for tonight, party cloudy to cloudy skies with some scattered showers and hazy conditions as well. Tomorrow, partly cloudy skies with some scattered showers and hazy conditions expected to continue to affect the area. Sea conditions, moderate in open water with waves up to 7 feet. Conditions for the next three days, again tomorrow Friday, partly cloudy skies, hazy conditions with some scattered showers. A tropical wave is expected to move over the area Saturday into Sunday. As a result, increasingly cloudy skies with shower activity can be expected mainly or especially by Saturday afternoon into Sunday with the possibility for some thunderstorm activity on Sunday. Breezy and hazy conditions are also expected. Across the region tomorrow, partly cloudy skies with some scattered showers can be expected throughout the Lesser Antilles. On the international scene, partly cloudy skies in New York and Miami, cloudy skies in London and Caracas, and clear skies in Beijing with some relatively warm temperature in Beijing. The sun will rise tomorrow at 5.38 a.m. and set at 6.40 p.m. For up-to-date information, log on to our website at weather.gov.dm or call the weather hotline at 447-5555. Please remember that we are in the hurricane season. Please keep updated. Good evening. On a programming note, please stay tuned for a special discussion with Ministry of Health officials on the Red Eye epidemic. To end the news, the headlines again. Prime Minister Skerritt pledges continued support for Venezuela on the anniversary of the Petro Caribe Agreement. President of the Grotto Board forced to resign amid protracted delay in construction of the Bellevue Royal Facility. And the Customs and Law Enforcement Officers now better equipped to help reduce the emission of ozone-depleting gases. Feel free to contact us at news at marpin2k4.com. You can also access our past newscasts on our YouTube channel. On behalf of the production team, I'm Andrea Louis, and to our viewers around the world, thank you for watching. Join us tomorrow.